Hey guys, in this video, I would like to give my two cents on a topic that I'm now proud to say that I've reached my final conclusion on and I no longer think about it too much. And that is the whole netty versus not netty debate. That is who is on gear and who is not. And in this video, I would like to give five reasons why I think judging someone's natural or not natural status based on pictures, videos, on especially body weight or FFMI is just plain silly and doesn't make any sense. Now, big disclaimer, I used to be one of those guys who after I've seen an impressive physique, immediately I went on and used Google and looked up height, weight and body fat percentage and then calculated FFMI and based on that made a judgment. And as you will see in this video, this is just actually pretty silly. So let's get into it without further ado. In this video, I will use some concrete examples of some famous figures in the fitness industry. So I hope nobody will get offended. So uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the plain obvious point that there is a huge amount of genetic variation between individuals. Some people will inherit bone structures and muscle attachments that will automatically give them an aesthetic appearance that makes them look five times more impressive than the average person. Matt August, for example, who I presume at least 50% of people watching his videos believe is on a something. What most people don't realize is that a good portion of why they would actually think that he's not netty is because of his muscle bellies and his abdominal muscle structure. Yes, you may be able to find pictures of him where he looks less netty than on other pictures, but even when his physique doesn't look superhuman, he will still look 10 times more muscular than someone who doesn't have a perfect set of symmetrical abs and virtually no space between his biceps and his forearms. The same is true for people like Jeff Side, whose appearance is largely enhanced by the fact that he just has super broad shoulders, which also has been the case when he was like 15 years old and nothing superhuman in terms of muscularity was going on. The truth is that no amount of drugs can give you a bone structure that will give you a physique of this natural V taper kind of look. The genetic variation also holds true for things like body fat distribution. A lot of people will have visible abs over relatively high body fat percentages, while other people only get their abs to show if they flex in half natty lighting, even when they are below 10% body fat. That is just the way it is. Eric Helms mentioned, for example, in a recent 3DMJ podcast that he still has a blurry four pack when he is 20% body fat. Greg O'Gallagher from Kino Body is also known for storing a good portion of his fat on his face, whereas his abs don't really blur at all that much. And needless to say, there's a crazy amount of variation in strength. Some genetic freaks will start lifting weights pretty much from the first time on they stepped into the gym. That will be the ultimate goal at an elite level of strength for other people. These people also will generally carry more muscle mass. The next point is that of FFMI. I must admit, I also used to be one of those people who, when someone's FFMI climbed over 25, then I immediately screamed drugs. But there is a big problem with that. First, your lean body mass is not just your muscles. It's everything from bone, skin, hair, tendons, glycogen, everything that is not fat. From this naturally follows that someone with a denser, larger bone structure will have naturally higher FFMI than someone else with a smaller, lankier build. My brother and I are good examples of this actually. I won't put a picture up of him for privacy reasons, but he and I are basically the same exact height, but he routinely weighs about 10 kilos more than I do at similar body fat percentages. He is just much bigger boned. The second thing is that some people often get so carried away with actual numbers that they completely fail to even use their own eyes and judge it for themselves properly if someone's physique is actually feasible to be attained naturally. Let's take a provocative example and look at Lane Norton. Many people will scream drugs because his FFMI is like 27 or something. But for Christ's sake, forget his FFMI and just look at his physique and ask yourself, is this physique possible to achieve naturally? Sure, it's an above average muscularity and for someone with average genetics, this might not be attainable. But if you forget about his actual weight, would you say it's any more unachievable than the physique of Jeff Alberts, for example, who has an FFMI of like 23? I wouldn't say so. I've already touched on this in the first one, but judging someone's natural status based on particular carefully selected pictures that they were made in the best possible lighting, best possible angles and after the perfectly timed pump up and carb up can be incredibly misleading. 
Yes, some photos can make someone look very unnetty, but people greatly underestimate the power of photography. I'll make a bold move and use myself as an example. I have average genetics at best, and I mean at best, and my FFMI is almost a negative number. But even I can find angles and lightings that would even deem me unnatural for some neurotic crowds like nettyornot.com, whom I'll touch on in the next point. If I can get myself to look like this on some pictures with a crappy phone selfie, is it that surprising that people with incredible genetics and above average muscularity and far above average leanness with professional photographers can look very superhuman-like on some pictures? The next two points are more like general philosophies and ways to think about this topic. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is this website called nettyornot.com. I don't know if you guys ever come across that website, but if you've ever googled around the themes of finding out whether someone's natural or not, chances are you've come across it before. And to give you a technical evaluation of this website, it's an absolute 100% joke. First of all, the way it evaluates people's natural status, 9 times out of 10 is just comparing them with past presumably drug-using bodybuilders. For example, on the article about Lane Norton, it says things like, as you can see, Clint Burley was the same height as Lane Norton, and the difference between their competition weights is about 14 pounds. Do you really think that the difference between a steroid user like Clint Burley and a lifetime natural bodybuilder is merely 14 pounds? You decide. I'm sorry, but this kind of argument is just plain ridiculous, as it completely ignores everything we know about frame size and bone structure. The comparison between Serge Nubre is even more insane. The argument is pretty much, well, Serge Nubre is 2 inches taller and 5 pounds heavier, but since Lay Norton is in the ballpark range, he can't possibly be natural. I'm sorry, but that is total utter horseshit. Not to mention the complete abuse of body stats that is going on on this site many times. He takes Scott Herman, for example, and says, Height 178 centimeters, weight 77 kilograms, body fat 5%. I wonder if he calls this 5%, what would he call a bodybuilder with striated glutes? Negative 5%? So based on this, he concludes that this is the highest level a natural bodybuilder can hope for. Then they proceed to show examples of physiques that are possible to achieve naturally and he submits the following pictures. This is actually a great segue to talk about a phenomenon that Dr. Mike Israel had talked about in a recent podcast on Revive Stronger that I would highly recommend to you guys. I quote him, Many of the people who like to accuse everybody of drugs are just people with shitty fucking genetics. You can kind of picture him saying this, don't you? I'm sorry, Mr. Netty or not, but if you think that these are the limits within which natural lifters can move, I can't help but picture yourself something like this. The overall vibe that this site gives is that anybody who looks remotely decent is a massive genetic outlier at best, but more likely is just a heavy steroid user. This is one of the most destructive, bitter-toned and negative websites I've ever come across, and I sometimes do indeed wonder if this is even serious. But hey, at least the author acknowledges that he has some issues, as he is apparently selling a book called A Hater's Synthesis. My advice to you guys is, save the price of that book for steroids instead. The very last point is just thinking logically about this topic. In some instances, it's really highly illogical to think that someone would actually bother going through all that takes to actually get away with steroid use and risking everything that he could lose if he or she got caught. I highly recommend you guys check out my first interview with Eric Helms, where he basically broke it down very logically and simply why it would be the most insane and dumb thing for someone like Lane Norton to risk taking steroids given all that he could lose. Based on that, I would be very hard pressed, but to come to the conclusion that it's just not worth the extra few pounds of muscle that he could gain by injecting some good stuff. And the final thing is, obviously you need to use some common sense and try to find a balance between being naive to the very extremes and think that everything between 21 and 42 FFMI is completely reasonable. But if someone's borderline and could actually just be someone with incredible genetics, I think it's just worth the better vibes to give him the benefit of doubt and not accuse him or her. All right, guys, that was all I had to say. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comment section below. And if you have any questions or um, yeah, disagreements, just please let me know. If you've enjoyed this, then subscribe and more stuff like this will come in the near future. So um, see you next time.